Welcome to our lecture online. Here in this video, we're going to take a conceptual look at what we mean by the reduced mass. Why do we need such a thing as a reduced mass and what does it represent? Well, let's go back to a simple example where we have a binary system. It could be a moon and a planet, two stars, one being large, the other one being small. Notice I use large capital letters to indicate that these are large or belong to the large object because here small r is bigger than big R, but r, big R belongs to the large mass and small r belongs to the small mass. And of course, most of us are familiar with the equation where the force of gravity equals the gravitational constant times the product of the two masses divided by the distance between them squared. You notice that S here is used for the distance between the two center of masses of the two objects. And of course, we also know from Newton's second law that F equals ma, and in this case, A is therefore the second derivative with respect to time of the, um, of the distance or position between the two objects or the two planets or the two stars. Now, if we know, if we use the example where large mass is much, much greater than small mass, a thousand times as large, then we can say that r will essentially become zero and big, small r essentially will be, become equal to s. And if that's the case, we can simply write the equation like this, where g times the product of the two masses divided by the distance between them squared equals the mass times acceleration in terms of r, the distance between the two. But what happens when r is not zero, when this is significant that the bare center is some distance away from the center mass of the large object, and therefore r is not equal to the total distance s. What happens now? Well, when we take the very same equation, we end up with g times the product of two masses divided by s squared, which is, of course, what we have here, except we're going to replace r squared by s squared, since r is no longer equal to s, and that must equal the reduced mass times the second derivative with respect to time of s. Notice that we still use the full distance between them, but since small mass does not revolve around the center mass of the big object, but around the very center, the center of mass of the two objects, therefore we need to use the reduced mass to make this equation come out correctly. If we use the mass of the actual planet, then this equation will not be correct. And that's why we need the reduced mass. Now, why is it a reduced mass? Well, the reduced mass is the product over the sum of the two, with the result is that the reduced mass will always be smaller than the smaller of the two masses. And that's why they call it the reduced mass. So in order to use this equation, where F equals ma, the force of gravity equals the mass times acceleration of the small object, to use that equation correctly, since a small object does not revolve around the center mass of the large object, but the center mass of the system, the very center, therefore we must, must use the reduced mass to make the equation come out correctly. And that's really the best way to think about reduced mass. Now, we're going to show you several more videos with some other ways of looking at the reduced mass to get a full understanding, but at least this way you understand we need this reduced mass because of the situation that the bare center is not at the center of the large object, and that is why we need that reduced mass.